Join me today as I take you to the buried village of Te Wairoa in Rotorua, New Zealand. There's plenty of wonderful history and excellent sights that you're gonna miss if you don't watch till the end of this video. Let's get right into this video. I'll take you guys to the start when I got here. We're gonna go inside, pay for admission, and see what they have. Also, you may see in the background at some points in this video, my mom's visiting me right now, so she's with me. Hello. Hello. We need two admissions. As I'm talking right now, I'll put up some shots from the museum on the screen, but the museum was really cool. There's tons of different artifacts all about the history, how it used to be a tourist destination, and what happened during and after the volcanic eruption that buried this village. Now I'm done in the museum, so I'm going to start exploring everything else. It says it's about 40 minutes to walk around this whole place. Here's one of the first stops. This is what their rooms were like. Pretty cool. I ran back to my car really quick because it wasn't raining when I got here. And now it is. I was going to put on this rain-resistant jacket, which I did. But they also have umbrellas here for you to use if it is raining. So that's nice to know if you're coming here. It's been raining for a few days now. So this is the site of a dwelling that was destroyed in the eruption. Those stones right there are what used to be part of a fireplace. Some household items that were recovered and even food scraps. In the museum, I was talking about how this was the main area, or the only area, for people coming to visit some of the geothermal features here to stay. Some more artifacts, and this is... I think all of this is, like, mud that was from the eruption. All volcanic mud. Oh, look, you can see a tree that was buried in the mud here or part of the house that says the remains that you see used to be the blacksmith here. Here's one of the houses. A one-room house. Some aspects have been recreated, but most of, or some of it is original. The old man that lived in this house was blamed for all of the eruption happening in the first place, which is pretty funny. Or at least funny to me that they blamed him. Here looks to be another Maori house. I think I could come down inside of it. There is the old fireplace. I wonder if this wouldn't have been the door before and this would have been the door. That looks extra muddy going that way. I'm not sure if I need to go that way or not. This was supposedly their little secret tunnel to where the flour was milled is what a sign over here says. Let me navigate this huge umbrella out of here first. And the ground here is so muddy. I don't think I'm going to be able to bring this umbrella through here. And I'm wearing nice white shoes through all this mud and... Oh, it's slippery too. Be careful, Mom. I'm waiting to step down and sink into the mud here. I don't know where their flower was milled. If it was milled right there, or if I just walked through that for no reason. There was a little sign inside of the house that said, Go to see where their flower was milled. Or take the secret tunnel. I'm assuming it has the secret tunnel, and the end of it is probably where their flower was milled. But I could have just walked around this way. Oh, this is the flower mill. So we walked through all that mud for no reason. We could have just walked on the path right here. I was reading everything here, and there was a lot to read, but I stopped because there's too much to read. They said it takes people like 40 minutes to do this outside loop, and an hour including the museum. And how long How long do you think we were in the museum for? At least an hour. Yeah, an hour just for the museum. When I went back inside to get my raincoat that I'm wearing right now, the worker said, how was it? And I said, I just finished the museum part, and she said, oh. <laughs> And then I, was, I just told her I was getting my raincoat, and she's like, oh, that's, we have umbrellas in here for you to use. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. So I'm assuming most people don't read much of it or any of it at all. I wanted to read some of the history because I think it's interesting seeing what this village was 
That was a Victorian tourist village. And before the eruption, and even during the eruption, there was tourists here. Uh, here's what the hotel employee's house was. Or the remains of it. Wow, look how deep this mud would have been that covered it. And stuff that would have been inside of their house here. Different bottles and medicine bottles, plates. And the most easily recognizable thing in all of these houses were the fireplaces, because I think the rest of it was probably all wooden and plant-based, but the fireplace, and that's why the fireplaces survived. Mom, you should eat some of these berries for the video. No. Right here is the remains of one of the two stores that were in this village. During the earthquake when the eruption first started, the, there was somebody that was sleeping at the stores to prevent burglary, or at that store, and he thought that he was being robbed at first before he realized what was going on. This is the site of the hotel right here. You could find the hotel's cellar, dining room, fireplace, or even the place where one of the tourists that talks about in the museum died during the eruption. Here's the cellar. Bottles of whiskey, wine, and beer that were recovered from this are displayed in the museum. I saw all of those in there. This hotel was decently sized. You can see where I'm standing right here, and this used to be the fireplace. And that is the rest of the hotel. And there is a picture of it before the eruption, of course. And then this is in the 90s when they were doing excavations on the hotel. To give you a little bit more background on all of this, this eruption happened like really early, shortly after midnight on June 10th, 1886. And it was one of New Zealand's greatest natural disasters. That structure in the hotel was the baker's oven, which makes sense because all the stone parts are what seemed to survive. During the eruption, it lasted about four hours long and about, I think it said, 120 people died as a result of the eruptions. And for those four hours, there was like hot volcanic rock and ash and mud falling from the sky, raining rocks and fiery debris. This is the site of the other hotel, I think? Let me see. Uh, no, this was a house right here. And then I think this is where the other hotel was located. So the Terraces Hotel was over here on the other side of the fence and it was mostly destroyed from the eruption but was rebuilt and used in the 1900s for tourists visiting the aftermath of the eruption. It was somewhere in this area here. This is something that I didn't know was here before today. So if you ever come to Rotorua, make sure to come check this out. It's pretty cool, not too expensive and definitely worth the money. Right here, according to this sign, you can see that there was a here. There's a stream that runs through here, and there's some steps down to a decent little waterfall from what I've heard, so I'm gonna take you there soon. Until then, I got a couple more little remnants of the village to show you. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is an example of a small storehouse where crops would have been stored inside of it. Right across from the little stream, river, whatever you want to call it right here. The water is really clear. I wonder if it's normally flowing this much or if it's just because it's been raining. I don't see any fish in there though. The water is really flowing fast in this part of it. It's funny because it's pretty deep. It must get shallow right there and that's why it starts flowing faster. But it's not that big. Uh, normally smaller streams like this that I've seen don't flow fast. They're normally slow moving because of the small size of them. Oh, what's this? A cannon. What's a cannon doing here? Let me read about this. This was found in the bottom of the stream in the 1930s. And they believed it was brought to this village maybe around the 1860s for defense from other tribes. I've just been walking. I saw her a little bit ago, 
but I'm not really sure where my mom went. I think I walked too fast for her. Or maybe she's actually reading the stuff that I stopped reading. I don't know, she'll find me eventually. Wow, oh, this ground's really slippery here. That would have been hilarious if I fell because I was recording. I'd be really mad if I slipped and fell here in the mud and I wasn't recording. If I was recording, it would be not... I don't want it to happen, but it would be better. Right here is a section of a Mori War Canoe. That would have been 30 feet long. That's one of the three sections of it. That's pretty cool. They were used for invasions of the Lake District by the Maori. The scenery and nature here is so cool. This reminds me a lot of Costa Rica. I'm gonna head down this to see the waterfall. I put my umbrella down so that way I can record this easier and it looks like there's gonna be some slippery wet steps over here to go through to the bottom of the waterfall. As you can already tell, it's pretty loud behind me, and this is the start of it. And then go down this way some more. But let's follow this cool little jungle path to the bottom of the waterfall. Here's a safety warning. Keep to the walkway at all times. It takes about 20 minutes. It's steep, reasonable level of fitness, and confident. Well, I'm confident that if I fall down, It'll be funny. Ah, this is really steep. I wonder when the next time in this video we'll see my mom is, because I don't know if she's going to come down here or not. Here is the waterfall, though. We're going to go all the way to the bottom. I hope you can hear me, because that thing is loud. I'm glad I decided to leave my umbrella at the top, because there's so many trees and stuff that it would get caught on, and that itself could make me trip. 90 feet high. It says these rocks are slippery, do not stand too close to the edge or depart from the walkway, but I don't know if this that I'm standing on is a part of the walkway or not. It looks like it keeps going downwards here though. Uh, here's a little better viewpoint of the waterfall. I'm gonna keep going down though. They have some plastic netting on these stairs, so it's not as slippery. Because these ones are probably always wet even when it's not raining just due to the mist of the waterfall. Wow, this is pretty cool. I was not expecting this big of a waterfall here. Uh, I almost, I almost just slipped on my butt and there's somebody sitting up here watching me. That would have been so embarrassing. Please walk without stopping for the next 40 meters because rock falls has ha have happened on this part of the track. So, hopefully if I keep walking I don't get hit by a rock. That would be a good end of the video, wouldn't it? Somebody better upload this if a rock comes down and... Never mind. You get the point. That definitely didn't take 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes at most. That's a great view there. The camera's not doing it justice. I'm trying to head back to start a little waterfall part so I could get the umbrella that I left there. Watch the umbrella is gonna be gone. I hope not. Nope, it's still down here where I left it. There I go. And just like that, I'm exiting the Buried Village. Those sites were amazing. I wasn't expecting that waterfall. And I'm impressed that I haven't even heard of this until today. Maybe that's just because, you know, I'm an American. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment. What do you think was the most impressive part of this video? Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, have a good one.